Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach. This time we're looking at Unit 3 of the Sample Assessment on the BTEC Applied Science and specifically I wanted to create something to help you with question number two. Now question number two, usually it's related to the experiment that's been mentioned in question one. If you aren't familiar with what question one is, then please check out my other video using the playlist that's on my channel and that should help you understand what the expectations for the exam are. Usually for question two, you're given some data, so it could be in the form of a table and a graph. And the questions related to this part is for you to give reasons why the experimenter chose certain ranges for their independent variables, talk about things like anomalous results. You may have to suggest a hypothesis or even a null hypothesis, and you may be required to carry out calculations or add things into your graph that they've provided you. So if I'm specifically looking at the sample assessment, the question that comes up is this one. If you don't have access to the sample assessment, please feel free to leave me a message below or email me and I can send it to you so you can practice it for your own revision. Now, question number two on the sample assessment is basically showing you this table and it's exactly the same investigation that was in question number one. You can see that this particular person has done the temperature range from 10, 30, 50, 70, and 90. So this is the table that they've given you. The first question says, give a reason why the supervisor did not use a temperature higher than 90 degrees. Well, when we're looking at experiments like this and we're trying to choose a range of temperatures, we want to choose a range of temperatures that are realistic for us to be able to create, but also safe for us to be able to create. So for one mark, you could say that more than 90 degrees is going to be quite hazardous. And at that point, the acid is going to start to boil or it could start to evaporate. And because we're using agar as well, at that temperature, the agar could completely disintegrate or melt. The second part of the question asks us to give a reason why the supervisor who did this experiment did not use a temperature lower than 10. It's the same kind of thinking that you need to have. What's the effect of that temperature on the acid or the effect of that temperature on the agar? So I would say something along the lines of the agar could freeze and at that cold temperature. And you could say that diffusion would be too slow at that temperature as well. So it would take far too long to obtain any results. So hopefully that's nice and clear. The other part of the question goes on to talk about the anomaly. So it says the supervisors identified and circled an anomaly. So what do you think has caused this anomaly? So you do need to know about how they carried out this experiment, which obviously would be detailed in your part A and would be some of the understanding that you would get from question one as well. So if you remember from the experiment, when they did the actual experiment, they were required to do these trials. And in between each trial, they were required to rinse out the tube. So that could be one reason. Another reason was that they had to transfer the acid into the tube that the agar was. And so that could be another reason that the transfer could have taken too long. So I've written down a list of possible answers that you could say, but you only really need to say two of these and explain them properly. So I, the first thing I would say is that the diffusion was slower, because if you look at the time, it's taken longer for trial number two. So that would mean that the diffusion was slower. So I would say that diffusion was slower or that it took longer because the acid was colder because that temperature might not have been maintained. The acid could have been transferred too slowly into the boiling tube. I've even gone on to say that you could have used a different size boiling tube by accident and that would mean that there wasn't enough acid to cover the agar. And you could also explain that when you were rinsing out the boiling tubes, there could have been leftover water in that boiling tube, which would mean that the acid was less concentrated and if the acid is less concentrated, then there would be fewer acid particles that would diffuse through the agar. So I think questions like this in the beginning are pretty straightforward. The challenge comes when you have to read off the graph and lots of students really struggle with this. So part C of this question was saying, identify using figure one, which is the graph, the average time taken for the acid to diffuse at 40. Now this should be pretty straightforward, but it's just ensuring that you read the graph properly. The first thing you would do to read it at 40 is identify where your 40 value is on the X axis and you would read up from it. What I would normally recommend you do is draw a line with a sharp pencil and a ruler 
polar until it hits the graph. Then the next part is to read across to your y axis and that will give you your average time taken. Look at the axis titles that should help you understand where you need to read off. So as I've done that particular activity of reading off the graph, I can identify that the average time taken for the acid to diffuse at 40 degrees is around 420 seconds. So that would be the one mark answer for that. The second part of the question asks you about the average rate of diffusion and actually gives you a calculation. The average rate is calculated by 1 over the average time. And it says calculate the average rate of diffusion at 40 using your value from the previous question and give your answer in standard form. Now, quite generously, they've offered three marks for this. One mark for the calculation of 1 over the average time. Another mark for... Uh, saying what the decimal answer would be, and then a third mark for being able to convert that into standard form. So the answer should be 1 divided by 420, and that would give you 0 0.00232. And if you write down everything that's on your calculator, it would be 558 at the end. And so I've rounded that up to 0 0.00233. And then I've converted that into standard form. So that becomes 2.33 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, this part of the paper is what I think most students might struggle on, not knowing how to add something called error bars. Again, I'm going to create another video looking at what error bars mean and what standard deviation means. But for now, I thought it's easier for me to explain it in the context of this question. So the question actually says, add error bars onto the graph figure one for each data point. And it says, use the standard deviations given in table one. So this is your table one. You've got two marks to do this. So not a lot of marks, but could mean the difference between a pass and a merit or a merit and a distinction. So it's quite important that you get this right. Now on your table, you've got these beautiful values of the standard deviation and they've been highlighted in that red square there. So those are what you're going to use to create your error bars. So for 10 degrees, we've got the standard deviation figure of 14.96. The middle of the error bar should always be where the data point is on the graph. So for example, I would draw an error bar a bit like this. Now on my video, the error bar has got two squares at the top and the bottom, but you would simply just draw a line almost to make it look like a cursor. So a horizontal line going across. Now these error bars, the center of the error bar must be on the data point on the graph. So I've drawn an error bar that's roughly 14.96 and the middle of that is bang on that 700 mark. The second error bar will go onto the 30 degree temperature and this time the center of the error bar is exactly where the average has been identified and it would go 10.7 up and 10.7 down. The third error bar is a little bit wonky, but you understand what I'm trying to say. These should be straight. It would go 7.09 up and 7.09 down, and the middle would be the average point. Then the fourth one would be 10.34 up and 10.34 down, and the center of the error bar would be on the average of that particular data point. And then lastly, you've got 11.72. It would go for the 90 degrees, it would go 11.72 up and 11.72 down. All I mean by that is you need to make sure that the middle of the error bar is on the average point and the standard deviation figure, it goes that much upwards and then you draw a horizontal line and it goes that much downwards and you draw another horizontal line. Like I said, if this is something that you don't necessarily understand just yet, don't worry. I will create another video very, very shortly and will basically teach you how to calculate standard deviation and how to plot these error bars. And we'll also talk about what they mean as well. So the next question talks about how to explain which temperature of the ones that they've tested shows the least reliable set of results. Now, one thing that you'll grow to understand when you look at standard deviation in a bit more detail is the bigger the standard deviation, the less reliable that particular result is. This is because the means basically seem to vary so much. That's what creates a bigger standard deviation. It's when your readings from your trials are so different from each other. So in this particular question, the least reliable set of results would be for the 10 degree temperature because the standard deviation is the largest for this particular temperature. So that should give you a good point to be able to look out for when you get questions about standard deviation and the reliability of results.
So there are a couple of other questions on the sample assessment that I've not gone through because they are really easy for you guys to answer and you can do that without very little supervision from me or your teachers. If you've got any particular questions about this topic area or unit three as a whole, please leave me a comment underneath this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As promised, I will create some stuff on statistics. So things like standard deviation, chi-squared, I will be creating resources for those very, very soon. So please look out for those. In the meantime, please stay safe and well. I hope you have a lovely festive period. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.